Turkey approves an internet censorship bill. Adobe patches a critical flash vulnerability. NIST finally practices what it preaches on SSL crypto. And we fight back against mass surveillance. All of that and more this time on ThreatWire. Hello and welcome to ThreatWire, your summary of what's threatening security, privacy, and our beloved internet freedom. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and this is our second episode of the Rebooted series, where today we will begin with censorship. CNET reports that Turkey approves legislation to block internet sites, a bill passed in parliament that, if approved by the Turkish president, would allow for the blocking of any internet site within four hours of receiving a, get this, a privacy violation complaint. Now, Turkey, which is a candidate to the European Union, received a lot of flack from anti-censorship groups. In fact, a spokesperson from the EU uh, said that, quote, the Turkish public deserves more information and more transparency, not restrictions. And the way I see it, this is just it reaffirms my belief that governments think that they own the Internet and that any attempt to censor, to shut off, to manipulate the Internet is an attack on the pillars of what makes this, this whole network great, which is the people. All right. Adobe on Tuesday issued a security bulletin with an update to its Flash player. The update addresses a critical vulnerability that could potentially allow an attacker to remotely take control of an affected system. The patch applies to Flash player versions 12.0043 on Windows and Mac as well as 11.2202335 on Linux. You can actually check what version of Flash you're running over at adobe.com slash software slash flash slash about, and if you're using IE10 and above, or Chrome, the plugin is updated automatically. The Regional Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, made a special publication in January 2011 disallowing the use of SHA-1 algorithm for digital signature generation in SSL certificates after 2013. So if you haven't noticed, it's actually 2014 now, and Netcraft is reporting that the SSL certificate for NIST.gov is in fact using the deprecated SHA-1 hashing algorithm. Now, the certificate was actually issued by Verisign sign on the 23rd of January. It's really easy to poke fun at NIST. I mean, they've been getting a lot of uh, flack amongst hackers for having allowed the NSA to influence its random number generators and certified crypto functions. But that being said, the story's a little bit scarier. According to Netcraft, nearly 98% of all SSL certificates are using SHA-1. The fear here is that a practical attack against SHA-1 is estimated to cost, according to Bruce Schneier, a mere $700,000 next year. That means a well-funded organization or government could impersonate any HTTPS website. So don't expect that little lock icon to be protecting you of a man in the middle attack for long if things don't change. Now, the SHA-2 family of hashing functions, which replaces SHA-1 and it is much more secure, was published back in 2001, but it still only accounts for 1.86% of SSL certificates. Now, to be fair, since the story broke yesterday, NIST actually upgraded their certificate, though not on all of their domains, and I too am guilty of using the weak algorithm on hack5.org, so I know I will be shopping for new certs soon. The day is coming to fight back against mass surveillance. Now, really, it is. The mass protest backed by the likes of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Reddit, the ACLU, Demand Progress, Greenpeace, Mozilla, and at the time of recording some 4,257 others has been scheduled for February 11th. Now, it is the website thedaywefightback.org where it states, quote, in January 2012, we defeated the SOPA and PIPA censorship legislation with the largest internet protest in history. Today, we faced another critical threat that once again undermines the internet and the notion that any of us live in a genuinely free society, mass surveillance. So the protest celebrates the win uh, against P Pippa and Sopa, and it also is in memory of the hacker hero who led those fights, Aaron Schwartz. So here's what'll go down on the 11th, I mean, aside from my birthday. If you're in the United States, prepare to see a lot of take action banners on websites urging you to contact your legislators. Uh, if you're a website operator, you can actually get the JavaScript to add just to right, just at the end of your HTML right before the body tag closing. Uh, that JavaScript will look like this and it automatically goes live at midnight Eastern on the 11th. 
Now, if you're not in the U.S., you'll be urged to contact the appropriate parties regarding your privacy. But furthermore, you're urged to get the word out on social media, you know, change your profile picture, join the conversation on Reddit and otherwise, you know, band together against the nastiest evil to ever grace our Internet and all people's fundamental human right of expression. Kind of feel seriously about that one. Our comment of the week comes from Jeremy, who wrote, quote, I think the community and people in general need to understand that Aaron Schwartz could have been any of us. The law is very vague and therefore very open to interpretation. Even normal use of the internet could be considered a violation of the law. The they clearly made an example out of him. Regardless of what you think, what he did was right or wrong, he was fighting for all internet users. Remember that. Now, there was also a comment that I uh, believe deserves a little attention. It was from Ken who wrote, quote, and you push Google Plus without blushing. I guess I do. ThreatWire was actually started as a YouTube commission show through Discovery Digital slash Revision 3. And at the time, well, I mean, YouTube and Google Plus are kind of merging into one. So it, it made a little bit of sense there. But now with this reboot, there's really an opportunity to do a proper RSS video feed and, you know, to continue this conversation on anywhere. So I guess my question for you this week is, where would you take your ball and play? I mean, Reddit, the Hack5 forums, a, a decentralized social network like Diaspora or Friendica, or hey, how about a Telnet BBS? I want to hear your ideas. Let me know in the comments. And remember, you can subscribe at threatwire.org and get involved with the community currently at Google+, where the conversation goes on all week. That's where I found out about some great stories like the one about the FBI's uh, RFQ to buy your malware or, or how the GCHQ targeted anonymous hackers with DDoS attacks. Yay. So anyway, mad props to Mike B and uh, I'm sorry, Mike M and Steve B for those contributions. And with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the Internet.